the motion is approved. Okay, with that, we are going to get into the introduction of our SHAC members. We have a lot of new faces, um, and we welcome back our members. Yes, if you don't mind clicking to the next one. And we are going to start with our parent members. Hopefully you had a chance to do the Mentimeter when you came in um, before we got started. If not, this is your chance to do it out loud. So, what we're going to ask you to do, when we call your name, just if you would stand, kind of wave at everybody so we can all start putting faces to names, and just kind of mention how long you've been on Shack. And one word that best describes what most excites you about being a part of Shack. So one word. That's, that's how we're going to do it. One word. Um, I was told that we could um, get this on video without needing the mic going all the way around. So just, I'm going to trust that everybody's going to use their nice big teaching voice. I know we're not all teachers in here, but your big loud teaching voice so that we can all hear you. If you need the mic, let me know and I will run it to you. And we're going to go alpha order, alpha by campus. Thank you, service, I love it. Christy. It's okay. I think kids, great choice of words. Um, Lauren is unable to be here. Um, she let us know, unfortunately, um, she, but she will be here at the next one. And Anna. Thank you, Madison Cluster. All right, Reagan, we're going to turn it over to you. I'm Brandon Brew, uh, my first year here. Uh, my word was engagement. Kids, hearing that a lot. Roosevelt, if you would take us home on the parent side. Hey, Rachel Brooding, Ray. Um, I'm fourth year on the committee and uh, teamwork. Teamwork. Amanda Bustos, too big. First time, and my word was wellness. Wellness. Awesome. Okay, so these are our parents. Can we give a round of applause to everyone? Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, community members, you're up next. You are going to introduce yourselves. I'll let you go in any order you want. Same rules apply. How long? And your one word. Thank you. And then our next category of membership are our district employees. So I'm going to look at Brandon and make him start, and then we can go around the table for now. I'm at the bottom. All right, I'm Brandon Carter. I'm the uh, PE specialist for the district, and this is my second year on check. Uh, my board was service. I'm Katie Steinhoff. I'm the health and special specialist. This is my second year on check, and uh, my work was food. Um, we do have, Howard Bush will be here, she mentioned that she would be late. And then we have um, one more um, category of membership, and I did make a slide for you, but Ms. Garnett, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Shannon Garnett, I'm the board president. I've been on SHAC since probably way before in 2012. Um, and my word, I have lots of words, but I won't break the rules. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, and again, welcome to everyone. Um, with this kind of being almost our first meeting, we wanted to make sure we um, had an opportunity for everyone to get to know the people that you're sitting with. And later when we start looking at our standing committees and that membership, you won't feel like um, you're looking at complete strangers, I hope, um, after that. So I wanted to go over the mission that has been published in our new bylaws. If you've been watching the board meetings, those um, were recently looked at, revised, adopted, and so the mission statement as it is written in our bylaws. So this is why we exist as a council. To provide advice and recommendations, council, prior to decisions pertaining to the areas of health education, curriculum appropriate for specific grade levels that may include a coordinated school health program designed to prevent obesity, cardiovascular disease, and type 2 diabetes through coordination of health education, physical education, nutritional services, parental involvement, staff wellness, environmental health, mental and emotional wellness, and health services. That is a mouthful to read. And that all comes out of law, just so you know that that is what Texas has in the education code. And so we pulled our mission statement straight from that. If you are following along on the agenda, our next item is the election of the SHAC chairperson. But if you guys are okay with this, I was going to go ahead and let me do my presentation first to kind of give everybody an idea of what we do on SHAC and then elect. I really wanted to do it the other way first so I could get rid of the microphone, but I think it makes a little bit more sense to kind of go over uh, the design and function of SHAC and then kind of elect our chairs. Are we good with that? Kind of that, that shift in our agenda. So I just want to kind of give you this this broad outline and I, I know I, by the way I'm Jennifer Aguilar I'm the director of PE and health I'm the one who sends the emails so that, that's me uh, I also want to say thank you one more time for understanding uh, I came down with the flu before our last meeting literally Tuesday night um, and because we didn't have a shack chair there was no one to run the meeting so that's it was kind of like an absolute perfect storm and that's the kind of timing i have so i appreciate you working your schedules around that rarely ever happens that we reschedule the shack meeting so please know that that is definitely out of the norm so thank you all for understanding 
But I wanted to quickly kind of go over with you kind of the design of Shack, the function of Shack, just a little bit more on kind of our mission, and then how it works on the feedback side of things. And by the way, we didn't introduce, Mitchell Knapp is our program specialist for PE and Health. He is technically not a Shack member, but I invite him to come help me with the technology side of things. He's also the one who ordered all your food, so um, he, and you will sometimes see emails from him. So he's gonna kind of click through for me uh, as we go through this, because of course my clicker wasn't working, so make sure and go to the next one for me. So the design of Shack, and we just got the um, new PDF local that the board created and the bylaws, and I will get those posted on our website uh, once I get back to the office, once those are kind of all officially released. Um, and so a lot of this is coming from that. It's not necessarily new for my people who've been on Shack, but we now have it in a document. So um, that's the great part. So as you know, all of you who are members were appointed by the board, you were approved by the board at a board meeting. Um, and there's four categories of membership. We kind of already talked about that. Our parents and legal guardians, community members, district employees, and then always at least one board of trustee will serve on the shack. The uh, board of trustee is ex officio, meaning not on voting. So um, just kind of here to, to guide and, you know, just I think kind of watch what's going on. Um, since you all are an advisory group to the board of trustees. Um, the majority of our shack must be parents, that is um, by the law. Um, and parents of students who are enrolled in the district and who are not employed by the district. So that, that's kind of a tricky thing. So we have a lot of teachers who are parents, but they can't serve as a parent on Shack because they're an employee of the district. So if you are categorized as a parent, then you cannot be an employee of the district. So just that sometimes can get a little bit uh, confusing on there. And then chairperson and vice chairperson must be a parent representative. Uh, just so you know, the state of Texas says the chairperson must be a parent. Northeast also extended that to the vice chairperson. Um, so we do ask that both of those be parents. Which you go to the next one. So meetings. We meet at least four times a year, and we are going to consider this meeting one, even though we had another meeting, but since this is a new shack for the rest of this year, this is going to be meeting one. So we took one of our work sessions, that's typically your subcommittee work time, and pushed that to full shack. So hopefully you picked up the revised meeting dates. If you're a returning shack member, there it's revised for you. If you're new to shack, they're not revised, it's, it's your meeting dates. Um, so you have that. So we meet four times. Our calendar is August 1st through June 30th. So um, our last meeting has to occur before June 30th. Typically, it's historically been done somewhere near the end of May um, as our last meeting. Um, all of our meetings are open for viewing. They are recorded, and they are posted on the Shack website, and that Shack website is neic.net backslash, backslash Shack. So you can find all the old meeting notes. I, I sent this to all of you in an email if you want to get in there and look at some of the old meeting notes, um, the minutes, any of that information that's in there. We're trying to really make that website something that um, helps people understand the work that you do. Um, so we're, we're definitely trying to make it better and a more informative website than just posting meeting dates. So um, hopefully you'll take a look at that. Another part of the shock design are the standing committees. We used to call those subcommittees, but we're going to use the language of standing committees now. So for Shack, we really have four main ones, and then we kind of have this extra one. They are technically a part of Shack, but they're not board appointed like you all are. So we'll kind of talk about that. So our four standing committees we have, classroom health and sex ed, fitness and physical activity. By the way, that is the only subcommittee that by law we have to have. So it is stated in the law that you have to have a fitness and physical activity subcommittee, but as a district, we always uh, maintain these four. A nutrition standing committee, and then our safe and healthy schools subcommittee. And what's the point of the subcommittee? Well, that's really where all the work gets done. Very difficult to get a lot done in a group this size. So we have the smaller groups that really get in and talk about the recommendations. And most of the work is based on the school health index, the SHI. So we look at the SHI, we look at the survey of the health of our schools, the health of our kids, the health of our campuses, and are there any recommendations that we would need to make based on that data that we're getting. So that, that's kind of the meat of the work. And so a lot of the, the discussions occur in those standing committees. Now, 
Northeast also has a KSHAC. We're one of the very few organizations um, that has a KSHAC. So that is a group of students, and they're secondary students, so middle through, through high school, and we meet um, twice a year. And basically, we are, we use them to get their feedback and their perspective on the work that you all are doing. So if there's ever anything that your standing committee, <coughs> you think, I wonder what the kids would think, I wonder what the kids' take on this is, we can have the subcommittee chair, the standing committee chair, come to KSHAC and talk to KSHAC, talk to our students, and actually get their feedback on it. Our KSHAC, um, we really strive to have a representative from every middle school and every high school. We actually typically have multiple for a cluster. It's hard to always say we have at, we have one at everyone because you know the middle school kid becomes a high school kid, um, and so they're still technically that middle school representative, but also a high school representative, even though they're not middle school anymore, because otherwise our KSHAC would be 500 kids by the time everybody kind of rolled through. We do try to keep them from sixth grade on um, so that we have some continuity in there and we reach out to um, principals and get help with people on there. They're an amazing bunch of kids and we will make sure that we're reporting back the work that they're doing when we talk about our um, standing committee reports. But again, we are one of the few districts who actually has a very high functioning KSHAC and those are definitely the highlights of my day when we get to meet with those kiddos. They're doing some great work and They've done things, um, one example is our KSHAC was responsible for our cafeterias moving to apple slices instead of whole apples because the students who had braces struggled to eat a whole apple. And so their work led to the cafeteria then changing to serving sliced apples. So it, it's amazing that the students can make that kind of a difference, right? Our kids are so great when we um, ask them for their opinions. So that's just kind of the design of Shack. And now, what is it that we do? What is our function? And just so that you know, that function comes from a lot of policies, EHAA legal and local, and then FFAR is our wellness policy. And the wellness policy drives a lot of the work that we do on Shack as well. So those are kind of our main policies. And now BDF legal and local was kind of where all of that design came from. So uh, Mitch, if you would go to the next one. So the function of Shack is kind of twofold. We make instructional recommendations and then policy recommendations. So it, it's kind of two. And you might only hear about one or the other, right? But it, we actually hit on both of these, which is why we have four different standing committees. So just some of the instructional recommendations that um, would go in front of SHAC would be um, any kind of preventing various physical health concerns, um, human sexuality instruction, that's our HSAE, that's what you'll hear that uh, referred to as, Opioid addiction and abuse, prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and sex trafficking. That is new in the law this year, that that has to go through SHAC, any of that curriculum. So that is definitely something that you will make instructional recommendations on. And then the instructional materials for help. So our SHAC from last year really understands that process. That was adopting a textbook. So the textbook is instructional materials. So that was the process that they used. So that's just some of the instructional recommendations. And again, all of this is coming out of those policies and out of Tech 28.004, um, the law. So policy recommendations. This is what comes from SHAC. The SHAC makes the recommendations on how many hours of health instruction do we want our students to have. One of the really cool things about Northeast that our SHAC has done is we are one of the very few districts who requires health education for our students to graduate. There are many districts that don't require the, the students to take health, and Northeast believes that that is very important for our students to get health education, and we are so excited about that. And that came from the work of SHAC, right? So um, the recommendations on the hours of health instruction, importance of daily recess, our fitness and physical activity um, standing committee, this has been kind of the, the cornerstone of their work and what they've been doing and ensuring that our students are getting recess time. Right? We, we definitely want the kids to get out. We want them to be able to play. So those recommendations come from this group. Um, increasing physical activity and improving fitness. Any kind of joint use agreements with community um, organizations, that is part of the work of SHAC, any of those recommendations. Increasing parental awareness of suicide-related risk factors and warning signs and available community suicide prevention services. So any kind of policy recommendations that we would want um, to suggest to the board on those topics. And then nutrition guidelines and wellness goals as part of our district wellness plan. 
So the district wellness plan, again, is a big piece of the work that we do at CHAC. So when we start going into standing committees and you guys start talking about recommendations you would want to make, those would go into the wellness plan. So the wellness plan kind of houses those recommendations for us. So that's kind of our big function. And then let's talk about communication, like how we talk and work um, with each other. So different feedback channels that come through SHAC and kind of how it works with you all. So from district employees to SHAC subcommittees, should have changed that to standing committees, sorry. Uh, district employees provide information to SHAC standing committees as requested. So our table back there of our district employees, their job here really is to give you whatever information you need. If you all are talking about making some kind of a recommendation and you go, you know, I want to know what campuses do about X, Y, or Z, or I want to know how the district handles A, B, or C, they are the ones who are going to provide that information for you. So in your standing committees, utilize them for whatever information you need to feel like you could make a recommendation. They're the ones who are going to provide that. They'll do the research, they'll bring it back for you. If you tell them ahead of time, they'll have it beforehand. But they are kind of your resource to the inner workings of the district and what's going on in the district and on the campuses. So that's one of our first channels of communication. Now, how do community members outside of SHAC communicate to you all, to SHAC? Well, our SHAC meetings are open to the public, so we welcome our guests who are here. Um, they are also recorded, they are put on there. But we also have, and you all have seen this, if anyone emails SHAC at NEISD.net, we have it written in policy that I, as the facilitator, will forward that to everybody. So if there's ever anything that um, a community member would want to share with all of SHAC, they can shoot that email to me. It, those come to me, and then I shoot them out to all of you so that you get that. And if that needs to become an agenda item, we talk about it. We can work that into that. So there is that definite feedback channel um, that goes there. So um, check your emails. That would be my one bit of advice. Most of our communication comes through email. So please, um, if you have another email that you would want me to use, like if you want to use multiple emails, let me know and we'll be happy to send our, our information to every email that you've got. And then how do our standing committees communicate to SHAC? Well, standing committees, like we said, they do a lot of the work because it's a smaller group and they really hone in and focus. We don't need all 40 people always focusing on the same thing. So each standing committee has kind of the things that they're going to focus on. But no recommendations will ever go to the school board until they've come through the full shack first. So the standing committees kind of do the hard work, right? And they come up with, here's the recommendation we're thinking that we would like to send to the board, but they will have to present that to full shack and full shack will have to agree on that recommendation. So all recommendations will go through full shack before they go on to any kind of a recommendation to the school board. Um, and then lastly, from shack to the board of trustees, um, the Board of Trustees is, is advised of any recommendations, and so we uh, put it on an action item, we do a presentation, and then at the end of every year, there's an annual report that the Board gets on any recommendations that SHAC has made, um, or all of that. So as you guys come up with recommendations, then I put that on a future Board agenda item. Typically, I'm going to present, um, or maybe I will bring one of the standing committee chairs with me to help answer questions, and then we present those recommendations to the Board, and then the Board takes care, take, takes over from there, so to speak. So that's how your recommendations and your advice goes to the board. So, any questions? I blew through that really quickly, um, but in your binders, if, if you're new, we put copies of all of those policies that I referenced for your light reading when you would like. Um, and then I will send the new PDF local when we have it, I will send the bylaws when we have you know, we've got the draft and want to make sure that I've got the final copy that's going to be officially published and I will get those out to you and I will also post those on our website. But at this point, questions. I didn't do that great of a job. <laughs> great question. Today, um, that's agenda <laughs> item number eight. Um, that's actually what we're going to do. Um, one thing that did come out of the new bylaws is that we have to have a minimum of one representative per cluster on each standing committee. Works out really well, as you see at your tables, there's four parents from every cluster, and we have 
for standing committees. So it works out beautifully. And I'm going to turn it over to you all, and y'all can arm wrestle who's going to be on what. Uh, uh, y'all are, are going to get to figure that out a little bit. But we are going to do that today. Um, you guys will have that conversation, right? Good question. Other questions? Yes. I'm gonna let you all have that conversation. So I actually am gonna have a handout for each cluster. And like Diana, right now I have you as currently on our classroom health and sex ed. And you guys can have that conversation. Cause there may be people who are like, you know what, I've been on this committee long enough. I'd like to do something else. Um, you, you all are adults. I'm gonna let you all decide, you know, with your interest and, and your expertise where you wanna be. Good question. Yeah, rock, paper, scissors. How do you wanna do it? Any other questions? Rebecca, are you raising your hand? No. Taking it all in. Taking it in. Got it. Got it. Anything else? These are great questions. You had a list up there earlier of the stuff that Shaq is responsible for. There are like eight or nine of them. There are only four standing committees. So how do you know which one is which one? It's going to be, you will look at the SHI and kind of the work that's in there. So Safe and Healthy Schools is going to deal with mental health issues. Um, and it doesn't mean you can't talk about the other things. There'll be some things, and you'll have a chair that kind of talks about that. You guys will create your own agendas and talk about some of those things. Uh, but there are some things that will naturally fall into others. But again, we'll look at the SHI, School Health Index. We'll look at issues uh, where we, it looks like we have concerns as a district. Uh, things that our faculty, um, the principals have, you know, we just kind of look at those and we're like, yeah, there's some areas that we get some improvement, and then you all start talking about, you know, what could we do? What are some recommendations that we can make? So it kind of falls naturally. I, we don't kind of say this goes here and that goes there. It, it's it's very um, organic process, I think. So that's fine. Good question. Any others? In teacher language, we call this wait time. <laughs> okay, so. Then on our um, agenda, our next piece, and again, I, I flipped these out of order, is we're gonna go ahead and do our um, election of the chairperson. So according to our newly adopted bylaws, um, this is the description of what our chairperson will do. Nothing has changed from what was in a previous or what was previously expected, right? So the chairperson is going to do what I'm doing right now. They're gonna preside at all the meetings. So I get to go sit down, I'm super excited about naming this person. Uh, <clears throat> appoint committees as necessary, serve as ex officio member of all committees without vote, work directly with the executive committee to compile agendas for all meetings of the SHAC. Who is the executive committee? That is me, the facilitator, that is the chairperson, the vice chairperson, and any of our standing committee chairperson, so they can work together. So. Standing uh, committee, if you have something that you want to present to Full Shack, you reach out to any of them and we build that agenda together. So please know this isn't an agenda that I build by myself in isolation. We work together and, and build that agenda as needed. Often people are gonna reach out to me and say, hey, I'd really like um, five minutes in front of your shack. When I get that um, call, that email, I send that to everybody on the executive committee and I say, do you all want to put them on the agenda? You know, just what they want to talk to you about. So it is a collaborative, to use your word, uh, approach to building your agenda. Um, they will uh, perform other responsibilities as assigned, right? And we all have that in our contracts. And then they will assist me with the annual SHAC presentation at the Board of Trustees. Um, and that happens in May. So knowing that these are the responsibilities of the chair, we are going to look to open up the floor for nominations for someone to, to serve as a chair. Now, just as a reminder, the chair does have to be a parent. So to kind of help with that, because some of us are new, this is the list of all of our parents, right? So if you wanted to nominate somebody, you can see the list that's up there. Also, the Board of Trustees prefer that the chairperson have at least one year um, on SHAC, just because it makes sense if, you know, it's difficult to run that. But that is a preference, and they recognize that that might not always be able to happen, but that is a, a preference. And so with that, um, we're going to open up nominations. So if there's somebody that you would like to nominate, you'll just let us know. Um, Mitchell is going to record those on another slide, so we have them up when it's voting time. Um, and if anyone gets nominated and you don't want to do this job, just let us know and we won't put you on that list, right? So we're not going to force anybody to do something they don't want to do. 
Yes, question. So I think in the previous slide it said that the chairperson cannot vote in a subcommittee. So technically is that parent is one person on the table, they're going to have their own subcommittee. They can't be a voting member of that subcommittee? I'm getting clarification on that um, because, yes, it does say ex officio non-voting member. Um, and so I think it's because they're serving on all of them. So I'm going to verify that with our uh, district lawyer to make sure um, if that meant that they're not voting for the other committees, right? Because they're an ex officio member of all committees. But they are also assigned. But they are correct. And so Robert's Rules of Order, which is what we are using now, which, uh, by the way, whoever gets elected, I have a gift for you. <laughs> Um, you will get one of these too, and I've been reading this a lot. Um, so this actually does say they always still get to be a voting member, so I am going to get clarity on that to, to see at what point they are not voting. I think it means they don't vote for other sub, other standing committee issues. But again, I, will, I promise by the next meeting or even an email, I'll have um, clarification on that for everyone. Good question. Okay. So are we ready to open nominations? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely, I'm fine with that. So, is there anyone who is like, I would love to be the chat chicken? Please, I'm begging. Look at the hands. Has to be a parent. Preference that they have at least one year on Shaq just because they kind of understand the workings of it. So. So this makes it tough, right? Nobody even wants to say, hey, I'd love to do it. Um, so now we're going to really put you on the spot and nominate. Let me just say this. I served as co-chair. Yeah, I was on the list. So I served as co-chair last year. Um, so let, let's just be honest. The, the first question is, how much time is this going to add to my life, right? Or steal from my life, however you want to look at it. It's, it's, it's like an hour a week. Like, it's, it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be involved in 85,000 emails and I'm going to, you know, be inundated with questions. It's, it's about an hour a week where you're just, like she said, you're building the agenda and then leading the meeting. So I just wanted to give a realistic expectation of what it looks like to actually do it. So, because I can't be one. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that, Sean. I, I appreciate that. And the reason he can no longer be is because he moved from being a parent to being a community member. So I now pay for college instead of. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, Debbie, who would you like to nominate? Uh, let's start with one, and then we'll go from there. I nominate Tony. Tony Kamen from Johnson. And Tony, you've been on five to six years. Five to six years he's been on. And your word was? Community, that was his well, word. Because you limited me to I know, I know. Sorry, I'm <laughs> that, that was Katie. Um, so before I come back to you, Debbie, I'll open it up to other people. Does anybody else have someone that you would like to nominate? And I will go one more time. Does anybody want to volunteer? I had a full head of hair before I started. <laughs> I know. Wally, I'm not saying anything. Debbie, <laughs> do you have one more? I'm still fascinated people on the spot. Rachel, do you want to be considered? Sure. Okay. Okay, so we'll nominate Rachel Brodeen from Roosevelt. Rachel, you've been on Shaq for how long? Four years. Four years. Anyone else mm -hmm. like to nominate someone to take over the mic? Yes. Melinda Cox. <laughs> Melinda Cox from Johnson as well. Melinda's been on six years. Six years. Um, we'll talk about the voting um, as we get ready to go. So, again, I'm going to reference Robert's Rules of Order yeah. so that we know. Following Robert's Rules of Order, which is now in our bylaws, it is a majority vote to elect somebody to an office. And what majority means is it is more than 50% of the votes cast. 
an abstention does not count as a vote cast. So you can choose not to vote and it just won't count. So I can't tell you what 50% is going to be until the ballots are cast. And so it will have to be 50%. So it's different than plurality. Plurality often means out of those three, whoever gets the most, they're it. That is not, that does not fit Robert Schulz's order. We have to have one person who gets at least 50% of the vote. Linda? You may vote, yes. Every, everyone on the committee may vote. So. <laughs> so any other nominations? Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. I'm new. Sorry, guys. I don't know anything other than the, uh, the one word that they said when they stood up. Is there an opportunity for those people to say a little bit more about themselves to help us new members have a better idea? I think that's a great request. Um, Tony, I'm going to give you the mic. Would you like to do your your speech? I'm going to say, so yeah, you probably want to limit this to one word. No, uh, okay, so uh, I'm a father of four. Uh, I have two kids that graduated. I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. Okay, I'll just talk a little louder. So, um, father of four. I have uh, a son. Um, that's in grad school at UIW, a daughter that's at Texas A&M. Uh, I have a, my son uh, that's a junior at uh, Johnson. He's involved in um, ROTC and the band. And I have a freshman that's a daughter, uh, my daughter that's a freshman that's uh, in athletics. Uh, I was uh, involved um, in the JPA, at, at the Jaguar Pride Association there at Johnson. Uh, became president of the uh, JPA uh, after serving for four years. Uh, was involved in um, cheer and spirit. Uh, my wife and I, I should say, I, I tried to choose the uh, outfits the girls were going to dance in, and I got trumped. Um, but that was something that I was going to be involved in. And then, of course, uh, uh, my, my youngest, or not my youngest, but my second son is in band and ROTC, and so we've been band parents, uh, or what I refer to as band-aids, and uh, we've been involved in uh, junior ROTC. So I'm a civil engineer, graduated from A&M, and uh, fortunate uh, that I was nominated to help on this, serve on this community. Uh, yeah, five or six years. I'm going to go to Rachel next, because that's the order that I'm going to Rachel, tell us about yourself. Hi, I'm Rachel Brodine. I go by Ray, Ray Ray. Um, I have a uh, son who is a senior this year at Roosevelt, uh, where he is in the Engineering Technologies Academy there, ETA program, uh, which he's done for the last four years. We uh, came from Bradley, which is when we moved here. He started sixth grade here. Uh, we actually moved from Georgia. so. Uh, military. Uh, I'm a uh, vet myself, and um, my husband's retired. We, uh, he has a small business. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I uh, do uh, PTA. I'm on the ETA Alliance. Um, I've done Leadership Northeast. Um, so I, I kind of got thrown in the deep end. I started off um, PTA as the box tops coordinator my son's sixth grade year and I went to president his seventh grade year so it's just been a it's just been a rolling ball ever since and and so I got in really involved because of that so four years four years all right and Melinda Cox hi my name's Melinda um, I've been on track for I think six years um, I have uh, I have a daughter who graduated from Johnson. She's now a fourth grade teacher in Austin. I have a son who graduated in 2021. He's at UTSA. I'm a senior um, this year at Johnson. Um, I am on council. I'm advocacy chair for council. I've been involved with PTA since my kids are in elementary school. Um, I'm also a teacher. I'm the, the founder and sponsor for the uh, Johnson High School Smart Driving Club, um, which we work all over the city of San Antonio. Um, so. That's about it, really. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I've been a volunteer forever. I've been on track, like I said, for six years. Um, I also 
have a side hustle where I make tote bags to make it a little bit muddy, and I make bags that donate them to the children's shelter and places like that. So that's who I am. Thank you, Tony, for starting that round of applause. Thank you to all three of you for being willing. Right. So, um, with that, I think we are going to uh, go to our nominations. So, our tellers are going to be Katie, Brandon, who doesn't have her bad timing, and Mitch. So, they're going to hand out uh, just blank sheets of paper of ballots. And these are your uh, three options. And according to Robert's Rules of Order, you can do a write in. Okay? Um, let me, again, just remind everybody, majority is um, what earns the, the position, right? So of all of the votes cast, um, we will, my tellers will tally that up. They'll, they'll be right up here counting. And what we will do is I will move on and we'll have our standing um, committees go ahead and do their reports while they're counting so we don't have to sit here and stare at each other while we wait. We'll do that, and then when they're done, they'll give us their report. Hopefully, we have a chair, and then we'll move on to our vice chair. Yes, and so when you write your name, if you would, please do a hamburger folk to my elementary people. Can you borrow one so I can demo? So, yes, top to bottom. So after you write your name, just hold top to bottom. You know, make a hamburger bun, not a hot dog bun, right? Hamburger, not hot dog. Once you have it ready, Katie, Brandon, and Mitch are going to come around and collect them from you, and then they will count them up and give us a report.
then we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is our standing committee reports. So they're going to just kind of share what they've done. Now, mind you, we've only had one meeting, uh, really. We had our introduction meeting, which was very much like what we are doing right here. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, which is very much like this, just kind of an introduction. And then we had one standing committee meeting. So there's probably not going to be a whole lot that they're going to report right now, but we do want to make sure that everybody knows. And then hopefully they will be done and we can announce our chair and we can turn this over and then we can do our vice chairperson elections. Um, and then while they're counting those, we will allow you all to kind of pick your standing committees. And we've got 30 minutes. We can do this, right? So. I am going to ask, ideally, so we do have people who've been serving as a chair for each of the standing committees, so I'm going to put them on the spot to talk, but I have some talking points for you, Tony, as you're looking at me. I got some talking points for you. So you can talk about these or you can talk about whatever you want, um, just about the work that your committee has been doing this year and looking ahead at the work that your committee is going to be doing throughout the course of the year. Because then later in this meeting, people will then arm wrestle for who wants to be on that committee and do that work with you. Yeah. Right? All right, so um, since you are the chair for Classroom Health, I'm going to turn the mic over to you. So did, did they vote already? Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, you were already. I was already the chair. Okay, I gotcha. Uh, so on the, uh, uh, on the, the uh, Classroom Health and sex ed committee, we talk about uh, the curriculum that we're, we're looking at for, let me get over here, um, everybody can see me. Uh, so we're, we typically talk about the curriculum that uh, is involved in both the high school level as well as the uh, middle school and even down into the elementary level. And so we wanna make sure that it's, uh, it's age appropriate, um, that um, there's not anything is, any things that that the parents involved, that the parents or the community would necessarily object to. Uh, if we want to be a consensus from the standpoint of, of educating our kids. You know, we, we do lead with abstinence first, uh, and we want to continue to do that because uh, obviously, you know, kids um, starting with the with the sex ed standpoint, you know, it's a it's a not only as a physical act, activity, but it's an emotional deal, and so we believe. Um, that that's something that we'd like the parents to lead with, um, but it's something that uh, there are a lot of parents out there in different parts of our school district that aren't as involved. And so that's where um, if we have trusted advisors our, with, with our uh, health teachers, as well as any of the other, uh, um, any of the other teachers or counselors, that those kids feel comfortable they can go to. Uh, some of the things that we're gonna be looking at in the future is, a, again, uh, just going through and making sure that we're meeting all of the uh, criteria um, with the, with the uh, indexes uh, that is uh, done throughout the state and making sure that we're uh, capturing all of those items that we need to address uh, to, to move forward. Anyone from Classroom Health want to add anything? Stephanie? Anybody? Diana? Anything you want to add? Did he do it all? All right. Great job, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, many of you might know they, they, that subcommittee is going to have a lot of work ahead of them because we have some new laws and um, new teaks that came out for health, which is why we had to adopt a new textbook last year, um, and a lot of changes that have happened in the law that impact health. So if you join that standing committee, um, our first standing committee meeting is probably going to be listening to Katie or I take you through all the new laws that uh, have to deal with health. So that's going to be a fun one. Um, all right, we're going to go to our next standing committee, Fitness and Business Activity, Debbie Frino. I know she's got my voice. Do you want the mic? No, she doesn't want the mic.
Thank you, Debbie. Anybody from that subcommittee have anything that you would want to add to? All right. And then St. Valley Schools, Melinda Cox is going to tell us what they've been up to. All right. So basically, I'm just going to read from the I don't have my notes, but we reviewed and provided feedback on the second nine weeks of sixth grade and health, high school health curriculum. Um, so that's what we worked on pretty much um, up until this point over the summer into the new school year. Um, looking ahead, we uh, are being tasked with the new TEKS for prevention of child abuse, family violence, dating violence, and sex trafficking, um, which uh, we are going to start working on that, I guess, whenever that becomes available. Um, that, there'll be a review process there. We'll review violence prevention curriculum provided by guided services. We will then present our recommendations to the full shack. Um, and uh, two other things we wanted to add to that, I think it's down the bottom, but we want to uh, work with KSHAC. Um, we have two uh, additional components we'd like to work on, uh, environmental health um, and also mental health. And we just thought that uh, you know, what we might think might be a mental health piece might be different coming from the students. So we wanted to make sure that we were hearing from the kids uh, who are walking the halls and dealing with issues that they have um, from them directly, both on the environmental level and also for mental health. Thank you. Um, at our SHAC meeting last, or KSHAC meeting last spring, just FYI, I'm going to build on that mental health, um, we talked to the kids, got their feedback on, you know, if you could take one deal trip for help, you know, you could go anywhere, sky's the limit, wherever you want to go. We were floored at how many kids talked about wanting to um, hear from or talk to people in the mental health um, industry. Um, so it is front and center for a lot of our kids. So we were really surprised by that. And so we're really looking forward to kind of seeing that partnership and how they can um, give their perspective to safe and healthy schools. All right, Nutrition um, Standing Committee, which we have no one from the Nutrition Standing Committee um, that, uh, well, we don't have a, a chair for that committee at this point, so I'm going to talk to you about what they've done. Um, and probably you've noticed that the first thing that everybody has done has been the same. So this goes back to how the standing committees do work, and then that has to go through full shack before it goes anywhere else. So all of our standing committees have had that opportunity to review because before we say, hey, this curriculum has been reviewed by Shaq, we want to make sure that that means everybody in Shaq had the opportunity, not just the classroom help. So classroom help obviously did it a lot longer and did a lot more in depth. But so we took their recommendations from classroom help, we made all the revisions and suggestions that, that they gave us, and then, then that document went to full Shaq. So that was kind of how that process worked. So that's why you see that on every standing committee. Every standing committee laid eyes on that curriculum uh, before it went forward. Um, and so looking ahead nutrition, they really 
uh, by law, they are the ones who kind of own um, the wellness plan for the district. And kind of like I said, so the recommendations that you all are going to make as standing committees go into the wellness plan. So they will be taking your recommendations, putting that into the wellness plan, and then of course looking at um, recommendations we might want to make for um, nutrition services or any of that. So that is um, that committee. So one last, let me talk to you about KSHAC. Because again, we're one of the few districts who have a KSHAC. So our KSHAC this year began a partnership with the American Heart Association, and it's been amazing to see the kids. So the kids were partnered up um, and kind of made little small groups, ideally by cluster, but some of them went across clusters, right? Because remember, we have middle school and high school. So they kind of partnered up, and they picked an awareness campaign that they want to take back to their campuses. And, and some of the options were um, <clears throat> vaping, right? Anti-vaping campaign. Um, Hands-only CPR, right? Talking about, you know, if you're the only person in your house who knows CPR, and you're the one who needs CPR, uh-oh, right? So um, that was one of the campaigns. So they, they, the students got to pick their own campaign based on kind of their campus culture, and they're taking that campaign back because the idea is kids will listen more to other kids, right? We tell them all the time all of these things, and they don't always listen to us. So they're picking their own campaigns, and they're working very closely with um, our partners from the American Heart Association. There are some scholarship opportunities involved with this campaign based on kind of how they do. So we're super excited about this partnership. Um, we're going to bring them back in January, and the, the actual campaigns all start in February because that's Heart Month. So they'll, and they've picked like what the prizes are, they've worked with their administrators on what they can do, um, how to motivate students um, across their campus to get involved in it. So their advocacy, they are our health advocates back on the campus. And so we're super excited about the work that they're doing, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, and remember that they're always available if your standing committee wants to hear from the kids about anything that you're working on, your, um, your standing committee chair can come to the KSHAC. We typically don't bring KSHAC here because they're in school. Um, and a little intimidating for them to talk in front of this big group. So we bring the standing chair, or if there's somebody else, standing chair can't do it, somebody else wants to come do it, and come talk to them. They are amazing to listen to, and they, they will definitely um, give you a great perspective on those things. So that's always available. So with that, tellers, are we ready? So for a shack chair, the number of votes cast was 33. Necessary for election was 17. Tony Kamen received 16, Rachel Brodine received 9, Melinda Cox received 6, and there were no illegal votes. Okay, so I'm going to repeat this. The number of votes cast was 33. Necessary for election, so a majority of 33 is 17. Tony Kamen received 16, Rachel Brodine received 9, and Melinda Cox received 6. So what that means is there's no election. And what that means is, we're going to vote again. So, Katie and Brandon and Mitch are going to give out um, ballots again. Um, and they will recollect those, put them in a new group. And just as a reminder, someone needs a majority of the votes that are cast. So, a majority of the votes that are cast.
one. Because if you abstain from voting, if you wrote abstain or you put a blank ballot in there, it doesn't count. So instead of 33 vote casts, it was 31 vote casts, but the other numbers don't really change. And so a majority of 31 is 16. So Tony Kamen is our new chair. Congratulations. And I apologize for that. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, I was an English teacher, and so I didn't do that math in my head very quickly. And I'm super glad that you brought that up. So, Tony, first of all, let me give you your gift. There's Robert's Rules of Order that explain all of that, that we just made a mistake on. And I'm going to turn over the mic, but I also have. An agenda for you and notes, but I'm here now. We're just going to do the vice chair election next. Well, thank you for your vote of confidence and for the people that voted against me, too, to keep me honest. Uh, let's see here. So, next, we're going to start the election for the vice chairperson. Uh, nominations are now in order for the office of co chair. We have ballots. All right. So the responsibility is to preside at the SHAC meetings in the absence of the chairperson, uh, serve as ex officio uh, member of all committees without a vote, uh, oversee activities of all standing committees, and perform other responsibilities that may be prescribed by the SHAC, which are in accordance with the SHAC's authorizing statutes, district policy, and the direction of the board. Okay, the ballots are going to be green this time. So, uh, do, yes, I guess we need to open up the floor for nominations. Or, yes. We have we have a su suggestion. I take that. Okay, you make a suggestion. Okay, yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. We have Rachel Ray Ray. Uh, any other nominations? Or, or I guess I need to uh, um, get a second. I don't need a second. Okay. All right. So we have Rachel uh, as a nominee. Any other nominations? Yes. Okay. We have Jasmine. Okay, Melinda, so Rachel, Jasmine, Melinda, any other nominees? All right, can I get a motion to close the, nominee, uh, the, the nominations? All right, we have a, um, a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, all those opposed? All right, so now we have, yes, sir. Do you make a motion here from Jasmine? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Great. Okay, Jasmine, would you like to say something, please? Um, oh, I don't need a microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is actually my second year on Shaq, and I also sit on council, which I think it's been about three, four years. Um, I'm also active um, in the Hair as Hair as President of the PTA. I've also sat on Madison PTA. I've also sat on Senior Management PTA, and I have a son who graduated. He's
by choice, meeting new people, and also helping to make change as we evolve in the world. And um, as far as challenges, well, like, I accept them. I think they're a growing thing. We're always learning and growing new things. And I, I enjoy being healthy leadership and helping people grow because I work, they all help me grow as well. So, yeah. So that's pretty much my Great. Thank you very much.
election was 16, Rachel Brody received 15, Jasmine Gonzalez received 9, and Melinda Cox received 7, and there were no legal votes. All right. So, we are going to vote. Yep, one more time. Yes, sir. So that, that just means that we've got a lot of community involvement. We can't really, uh, everybody. Likes everybody. Yeah, absolutely, if anybody would like to withdraw. Okay, okay. you would like to withdraw? Okay. So Melinda Cox is going to be, is, is going to withdraw her um, nomination. So we are down to Two. All right, so the nominees are uh, Rachel Brody from the Roosevelt Cluster and Jasmine Gonzalez from the Madison Cluster.
where we compete against other districts. We compete as a community, so San Antonio competes against all of the other uh, cities in Texas, but we also compete as a district against other metro school districts. And what it is, is you log healthy habits that you are doing from January 9th through March 5th in the app, and it earns you points. So you log that you drank water, you log that you went for a walk. You can get points for up to, I believe it's like 15 things that you log. Uh, who has time to log 15, right? But you deserve to win if you log 15 things a day. But um, registration is going on, right? well, pre-registration is happening right now. So we're asking all of you to pre-register today because you will get a bonus 250 points if you register before January 9th, and then that helps us as a district get more points. So you'll hear us talk about this. We'll be sending out emails. Hey, remember to log your water, log um, your walking, tons of different things. So if you don't mind, if, if you're okay with it, we are asking if you would register and then download the app. And you can register in the app if you download the app, or you can register on your computer when you go home and then download the app later but the points will come from logging your activities in the app. So to participate in the actual challenge, you will have to have the app. And It's Time Texas will send out swag, t-shirts, they'll have prizes throughout the eight weeks. As a district, we are also awarding prizes to the top high school campus, the top middle school campus, and the top elementary school campus. So you can put your points to your campus that your children go to. You'd have to pick one. Um, so I let you figure that out, who the favorite child is, and give your points to them. Um, but Northeast won this challenge two years ago, and when I got hired last spring, I was reminded that Northeast won it two years ago, and Northeast needed to win it again. So we're, we're trying to get super creative. Um, but So we would just ask if, if you don't mind, and then promote it to people. There's a cool feature in the app that it will send someone a text. So I made my husband and all of my in-laws all register and do it. Um, and I just it shot them a text, and then they can click on that and register right then and there. So that's really all I have to say about that. So we're asking you all to help us win this challenge again. Um, and thank you to Evan Henson, who works on the media side and has been putting things on the Northeast website, sending it, putting stuff on Facebook. So he's helping us promote it as well. So we're asking you to join us in spending eight weeks of just being cognizant of the healthy habits that we do. And are we ready? Yeah. All right. All right, so our second vote for the shack, or the second round of voting for the shack vice chair, number of votes cast was 28, so necessary for election was 15. Rachel Brodine received 16, and Jasmine Gonzalez received 12. So with that, Rachel has been elected to the position of the co-chair. Welcome aboard. Thank you. I will you as well. You too, get a vote. So with that, uh, thank you for everybody coming. The meeting is now adjourned. It is officially 1.37. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And we'll see you at the next Shack meeting. Yay.
uh, lessons that would be possibly, uh, I guess, most